Welcome to Jump Shots from the Goal Line. I am Jonathan Dugan. I am joined by Mr. John Hinningson and Mr. Ben Crownover. This is the number one sports podcast on all Apple podcasts and all of uh, Spotify. If you didn't know, now you know. It is the perennial sports podcast, so thank you for tuning in. Um, I am just so excited to be recording this at this hour of the day. It's fantastic. Um, boys, we had a terrific week of sports uh, for the most part. How's everybody doing? Is everybody good? Everybody awake? I'm good. I'm like uh, than you. You sound pretty pretty gloomy. Yeah, I was like, you okay? I was like, you want to? Maybe you need to get something off your chest. I I'm feeling like Lenny Dykstra. Just take. I'm just shooting my shots, baby. (laughs) I do have some stuff to get off my chest, actually. I'm uh, I'm still in Georgia time. Uh, Like I told you boys last week, I I went to Georgia for my sister's vow renewal. Um, Was lovely. It was a great event. Had some great time with the family. Watched the Tennessee uh, Georgia game in Georgia with some Georgia fans, so that was fun. Um, but I do want to start off the episode with some hot fire. I want to say "fuck American Airlines." Yes, I just used the F word. That's how uh, infuriated I am. I'm, I'm a little bit tired, so if you hear some yawns, audience, I'm sorry. You should have um, tweeted a big cat. I, I should have. Yeah, he, I, yeah. He's, he's not an American Airlines guy, huh? No, he's and just. If, he's, and if you hear yawns, uh, that's actually typical. So yeah, it's I mean, true. That's, we bring- that's, 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 Dugan's always just tired. He's he's always on mountain time. It's his height. Yeah. Wow. Good joke there, Henny. I like it. Wow. <laughs> um, but but going back, uh, the trip was good. The return trip was not good. Um, we we got into Phoenix at eleven o'clock at night or at nine thirty at night. Uh, rushed to the gate, holding my two year old daughter who's thicker than a snicker. Uh, got some good exercise in, made it to the gate what we thought was right on time. They pushed the flight back 30 minutes, three separate times, then canceled the flight altogether, uh, rescheduled us for 7 in the morning the next day. Um, we negotiated that to 9.30. They gave us some some travel, not travel vouchers, but um, taxi vouchers and a, and a hotel room. The, the taxi uh, took 45 minutes to get there because we needed a car seat since we didn't have ours. It was still on the airplane. And then uh, the, the taxi took us to the wrong hotel. And uh, by the time we figured it out, he had already left with our, our taxi voucher, paid $55 to get to the, the correct hotel, got five hours of sleep, got to the airport at 930 in the morning, um, got on the airplane, taxied for an hour. Then they told us that the hydraulics weren't working, canceled that flight, put us on another one, taxied on that one for an hour and a half. Then they told us that the left engine wasn't working. This is and, all in uh, Phoenix? All in Phoenix, which is a 30-minute... Why didn't you, you just know, drive home? Good question, Ben. Number one. Um, <laughs> number one. <laughs> right. uh, I've, been wondering, I've, been, I've been dying to know, Ben. So yeah. I'm so glad you asked. I've been dying to know. Number one, didn't want to spend the money on a rental car because it was expensive. Uh, two, it would have taken us um, quite have a while to get... For a hundred bucks. Hey, Guess what, buddy? It wasn't 100 bucks. It was $250 to get an Uber. And we didn't have our car seat. And if we wanted to get our car seat, it was going to take like an hour and a half to get it because American Airlines does not have employees right now, apparently. Um, I have a two-year-old. It was uh, 1130 at night by this point. Um, my father-in-law was already asleep. He couldn't drive up to Phoenix to get us. It was just a shit show and a half. Uh, but we finally, after like an hour and a half of being on the plane, it did take off and I got home um, eventually. But your boy's a little tired, still on Georgia time, like I said, but I'm just happy to be just, here. I'm happy. I would have just paid whatever amount of money to not be at an airport. Yeah, one would think, right? One would think, but, uh, you know, we're building a house. We want to make yeah. sure we have our shekels in order. Oh, my so. gosh. <laughs> no, excellent use of, excellent, hey, excellent use of shekels. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to drop that one. I know Big Ben's thinking. Big dropping shekels. I, I, I'm just, I approve of that completely, regardless of what else you say. I'm fundamentally I know what ben a is different thinking. person. I'm just like, no, I don't care. I, I've I, paid $1,000 to to just not miss a flight, just to book like the next flight if I was in line for security too long. So like, I'm not staying at an airport any longer than I have to. 
Well, we all know, Ben, you make the big bucks around here. So, you and your yeah. wife make good money. I don't know. All right, whatever. You you <laughs> would know. Not... You were her manager. You used to see her commission checks all the time. <laughs> let's let's legislate everybody's everybody's I'm money like, situation I'm gonna, right I'm now. I'm going to do the lie detector <laughs> test to determine that was a lie thing, dude, like on you right now. But. <laughs> well, well. Anyway, I'm glad I got hey, the that enemy off my here chest. is American Airlines. The enemy here yes. is American Airlines, yeah. and let's not forget that I they're the they ones who get them out. Out for- So send some vouchers to the podcast. <laughs> I think yes, they were please. looking out for your safety by not putting you on a plane with improper hydraulics, or or an improper engine. You know, so, yeah, I, so- I, I I do thank them for that. It was just it was uh, it was a tough day. Um, ben, you have small children. And as you know, they get restless very quickly. Yes, you just um, get in your car, get them home. My my daughter did grab my head and then proceeded to punch me in the face at one point, which was um, Sick. enlightening. Yeah, that was enlightening. I was like, where did you learn that? I didn't know you were uh, walking the tough streets of Tucson, Arizona already, you know, knocking fools out. But apparently she's ready. So, you know, at least I don't have to worry about as a father that she's ever going to get bullied because she'll just kick ass and take names. So that was cool. I just didn't expect me to be her first victim so it was, a, it was a fun day i had a grimy week if you want to know i uh i i've decided i'm going to be like dwight Schrute in the office and i'm buying playstations to flip closer to christmas for double the profit so you're basically big cat again right i mean two well, big cat references within the first no, 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 seven no, minutes uh, of our show this is this is more so like you know you wait he gives out PlayStations whenever he loses a bet. I am <laughs> selling them for hopefully, you know, 800 bucks a pop once people are like, I can't get these and my children need PlayStations. It's true. You need a PlayStation, bro. Like- well, that's that's the great dilemma that I'm going to face because it, it gets here tomorrow and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to just stare at a box and wait for it to become more valuable. I, I think the supply and demand, especially with inflation, it's it's going to be enlightening to see how that goes. But there's always going to be some bratty uh, child out there that's going to force their mom's hand. So I think I think you'll be in luck, pal. Um, outside of that, boys, we did have Thursday night football tonight. We were graced with the uh, just the fantastic presence of Marcus Mariota on the Falcons and PJ Walker on the Panthers. Um, I just want to say before, before we, true, we do want to, we do want to, you know, lest we forget, um, I, I do want to get ahead of this. I did place a bet about 45 minutes before the game on Cordero Patterson's um, over under on receiving yards. Cause it was only at, when I bet it, it was only eight and a half yards. And I was like, dude, this is a lock. There's no way this doesn't hit. That's such an easy bet. Um, turns out Vegas is always right. Like we continue to say, um, and the Falcons are an absolute circus and a shit show. And Marcus Mariota is the worst NFL quarterback I've ever seen in my life. Um, just, just tell me you bet the entire cost it would have taken to get an Uber yeah. from Phoenix. $200. On <laughs> yeah. what was the, bet? The, bet, the bet was exactly $200. Joke's on you, pal. Eat Listen it. here. Yeah. Thankfully, it was only a ten dollar bet because yeah, my okay. wife would right. divorce me. Right. My wife would divorce me if it was anything more than that. I'm not going to finish with. Shame, but he finished with uh, two receiving yards because Marcus Mariota is not a capable quarterback, and they don't utilize their best player on the Falcons. So, yeah, yeah. I mean- there's Not a picture really. of Mariota like on the internet right now throwing the ball like while he's completely laid out on the ground. So I mean, I think that pretty much sums up the Atlanta Falcons passing experience tonight. So, so I I know Ben, you said you didn't watch the game. Henny, I am I'm pretty safe to assume that you did watch it because you watch most primetime games. I watch bits and pieces. This is the game that you like watch, but you you like you you'd have to staple my eyes open to actually yeah. like. Stay committed to it. Was it on? Sure. It was around. The game was yeah. around. The way yeah. the Christmas tree is around. I don't stare at the tree, but it's there. Which your girlfriend already has her Christmas tree up. I, I oh, think, yeah. Christmas right? tree is up. Christmas tree is up. And actually, yeah, affects my naps. If I'm trying yeah. to doze off early in the evening watching a Panthers game. Yep, exactly. You know, how, how dare it interrupt your Panthers experience. Anyway, um, that play specifically, I think we've all played Madden before. And we've all had that glitch where like, your your dude is getting sacked and you accidentally hit the wrong button and he just 
glitches out and it throws like a Hail Mary by accident and it gets picked off. That's exactly what it was in real time, in rea- in reality, and it was incredible to watch. I do want to say Marcus Mariota still got that arm on him, bro. He can still sling the rock. It's just never going to the right thing. Uh, so that was impressive as hell to watch. I do have one question. Um, how the hell is Desmond Ritter this bad? There's, there's no way in my, uh, great football knowledge, I can even, and even put together reasonings why they have not put that young man in the game. Um, because well, good Lord, Marcus Mariota is ass. Well, it's kind of like what the Titans are doing with Malik Willis. Like they're not even letting them throw the ball. So like, yeah, that's true. You could do the same damn thing for the Falcons offense and probably not notice much of a difference. I feel so bad, by the way, for uh, Derrick Henry, because watching that game on Sunday, um, number one, I only watched the first half because when I don't understand, maybe Ben, you can enlighten me. How the shit does primetime football start at 830 on the East Coast? Like, and how does it, anybody watch it? So it's one of the really nice things actually about moving West Coast. It's one of the only things I actually like about sports on the West Coast is that I can you know, do things afterwards, but it's, it's basically, you just, Hey, eight o'clock, you just, you, you're in for the night. And when the game's yeah. over, you just go to bed. It's, it's I like, mean, that's it's, kind it's, of nice, but it's really nice living out here now to be able to actually go and like, all right, cool. Let me go to the grocery store after the game's over. Like, that's really cool. Um, but yeah. I hate, I hate like the 9am, the 10am kicks and stuff like that. Like that is brutal. Dude, so, even watching even take. the Ravens, even watching the Ravens on Monday night, I I obviously you know was looking forward to watching that with my brother in law. He had the projector set up, we had the Yinglings going, and uh, dude, me. oh I know, <laughs> we'll get into the Yinglings in a minute because I think Henny knows exactly where I'm going with this. Yeah, um, we gotta talk, gotta talk about it. Yeah, it was it was an experience, um, but dude, it was we got everything set up. It was already dark. And I look at my phone and it was only seven o'clock and I was like, how is this a reality? This is insane. But I did watch that whole game because it's my team and it was a, it was a fun game to watch. Roquan was incredible. But getting back on the yingling train, I, I smoked if, probably like a billion yinglings. Okay. This I was going to say, if you were about to slander yinglings, I was going to, I was just no, going to burn no. your house down it's, that you're building. It's America's <laughs> oldest brewery, bro. Like, yeah, it's a pro Yingling podcast. Like, we're West Coast guys, but no one's here to slander Yingling. I will say this, though. In green they, bottles they or fuck, cans? It was cans. Oh, you messed up. I'm so I didn't sorry. buy them. My, brother and, my brother-in-law bought them. And I, I agree with you. I was thinking the, the whole time. I'm like, why is this not bottled? The green bottles taste infinitely better. It's like the McDonald's Coke versus like, <laughs> you know, every other like, Coke dude, out there. It's like bottled Coke. Bottled Coke tastes better than canned Coke. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it, it, man, that's disappointing. It is, but it's still yingling and it was it's still, still delicious. Is. It's just not the same. No, it's not. But what I was going to say is yingling has fucked up, boys. Henny, I, I sent you a picture I, I went to Bucky's in, in Georgia, which is just an incredible establishment. I encourage you all, if you're ever in the South, which I can't imagine either one of you ever being in the South. Um, but like Bucky's is a gas station, which I'm sure you both are kind of familiar with. That is just like, it's basically like the American dream. They, they sell brisket sandwiches, like, like smoked brisket, smoked like pork butts, all the, all the things. And they have all the snacks, drinks, all like everything. They sell freaking smokers at Bucky's. It was sick, but I picked up, um, some yinglings that were, it was a, a Porter, a yingling uh, Porter. No, that no, was, you don't drink those. You don't drink those. Hold on. Hold on. I haven't gotten to the best part, Ben. It was a Hershey's Porter yeah. yingling. No. no. Yeah. It was the most Pennsylvania thing I've ever no, ever you, drank in my life. You, if you want to know what's – so Yingling has one beer that is acceptable. That's traditional Yingling. They do make a Yingling light. It is gross. Um, but if you really want to know trash Yingling beer, they I don't even know if they still make it. It used to be called Yingling Premium. And it looked <laughs> like if Pepsi cans – like the old Pepsi cans before like they did this stupid like – obama looking logo um you know like the like the tan cans 
kind of like uh-huh. I had a baby with a beer can. Yingling oh, premiums boy. are gross. I've had some bad times on Yingling premiums. Well, there's a lot. There's a lot happening here. I mean, yeah. one. I mean, I welcome the South. I love New Orleans. Uh, I'm not a big oh, Texas true. guy. You know, I do like Austin, but I'm not a big Dallas guy. But I do love New Orleans. And also, I did not know there was an Obama. <laughs> Yeah, can you, yeah. Can you like, elaborate on that real quick? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but what the hell does that even mean? Like, what you, Pepsi can? Is no, it delivered in saying, a drone? No, no, I'm talking about like the, I don't know, Pepsi used to look different. I don't know. It's just like, now it's the stupid <laughs> circle with like the red, white, and blue. And it was like, that looked like the Obama hope thingy. I don't know. <laughs> no, you you may be honest something. I just I don't know. I'm just I'm not. I, 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 just, I really don't drink enough soda, so that's all I'm saying. I'm just not familiar with the cans. I'm gonna send you a picture <laughs> after this, and you're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense." Like I'm telling you, I don't, I don't know. It, it, it's not. Is this like, like the? Wasn't there like a moment where like Kendall handed out yeah, a Pepsi? Well, she, she united one of those. world. She united yeah, world by giving Pepsi. Was that Pepsi or, or Coke? Or, yeah, I don't was remember. Pepsi. Yeah. Coke, Coke doesn't was Pepsi, stoop yeah. to that level, but. Um, it's true. Just polar bears. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna send you a picture because you guys are like you're judging me right now. And I know you, you just don't. Know. No, I'm really not. I'm really not. I'm like I really just don't know. I just never heard that. I was like, really? Like what? Like did I miss a day? I mean, I, I assume I just miss a day in the internet. Honestly, like that's pretty much what. Yeah, we're slacking over here, Ben. I don't want to yeah, tell you. Much. Just, <laughs> I logged off Twitter one time and I missed it. So. <laughs> All right. Anyway, getting back to the Yingling Hershey experience i i wanted to try it because number one i like chocolate a lot i know henny you're not a huge chocolate guy but it was one of those scenarios where i i had to try it because i love yingling and i love chocolate and it literally tasted like somebody took hershey's chocolate syrup yep. and just poured it in a beer so you can imagine it wasn't good no um at all <laughs> in the least I did drink three of them though because I bought them, and I'm one of those guys where if I buy something, I have to utilize it. <laughs> You're the one who bought them. All right, so this like, one's on you. Like oh, this was totally on yeah. me, dude. Yes. Yeah, I was gonna say because this is this is Ben. This is kind of his mo. He will buy like a like a beer that's described as a dessert, and I'm like, what are you doing? Like this makes <laughs> no sense. I mean, I'm not you know. And again, this is again, this is a no shame. I'm not trying to shame anybody here today. So I just want to. Pump the brakes and all that. I'm not shaming you either, Dugan. But you are known to buy, uh, just like Ben can maybe misremember what a Pepsi can looks like, uh, you will tend to buy a very dessert-oriented beer, which is just bizarre drink- to me. I'm drinking a pumpkin porter right now. So Okay, okay. I am sipping on a Four Peaks pumpkin porter right now. So am I. It's a sa- yeah, we're having Fine. the same yeah. beer. What it's an a, experience. It's a good- are it's you a good, guys it's in a good the beer. same room and you just left me out at my house? Like, what was going on? Here? <laughs> yeah, we yeah. we knew you had a lot going on, Ben. Sorry. I actually, uh, what you didn't know, Ben, is I Uber um, from uh, from, <laughs> no from, from Sky Harbor, Phoenix, <laughs> and I actually did pick them up. So they never did actually catch that plane. But I did cut them a deal, uh, fans and friend, uh, friends and family discount, and, uh, and they're back in town. So I heard yeah. that is a super convenient way to get to places that you need to go to, so. <laughs> what uber <laughs> oh god oh gosh all, all right just anyway. see what i love you guys this is getting off the rails already we're, yeah. we're absolutely, so let's just let's go <laughs> let's bring it back in all right uh we had a super good weekend of college football this past weekend though um ben i believe you did pretty well on your picks i was talking to you earlier at work it sounded like you had a pretty good week yeah it was, uh, um, it was you want nice to talk little, about it yeah nice little 63 percent bounce back i had a couple of games that i ended up uh i gave recommendations to people that but i didn't take them on the podcast so i didn't have them on my official sheet um mm-hmm. they but the picks i did give out 63 percent georgia southern heartbreaker iowa heartbreaker it, it sh- and I, I know I tweeted it at you guys, but it should be illegal to not score anything for half of a game. Because um, <laughs> once it got to 30, like in the third quarter, I'm like, oh, I'm good. I got this. And it's like, no, they just stayed at 27 for 40 minutes, it felt like. Um, no, but I was uh, I was pretty pumped about it. The, the slate this week isn't like super exciting. There's some interesting ones, um, but... No, overall, like we're just we're out here grinding. We're making money. So I got a, yeah. I got. Let me see here. I got eight 
um, standard picks for you guys. And then I did put together a little teaser parlay on some of those, those games that normally I'm like, I didn't touch it. Um, so we should be able to cover most of this stuff. Um, you want me to dive right in? Yeah, for sure, man. All right. So I don't, I haven't given out a money line dog in a while, but we got a, a real barn burner going down in, um, I don't even know where Georgia Tech plays. Um, Miami Hurricanes. Atlanta, take, uh, Atlanta just, baby. Just, just yeah, Atlanta, yeah. like not even there. like a suburb. No, dude, just, it's in just Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, it's just, in all Atlanta. right. Well, we got a barn burner in hot Atlanta. Um, hey, you got to be careful with that Atlanta was, you know, on fire during the Civil War. So it's, you know, no. too soon. Oh, don't, no, don't, don't, no, no. Ben knows no. about Sherman. He's aware. Yeah, he's dude, aware. Yeah, he's, he's a Coca Cola guy. He's a Coca Cola. Hey, come on, he's come on. He's supporting yeah. Atlanta. Well, I thought he was a history guy. So I'm just I making am a history sure. guy, but I'm not. I'm not supporting Georgia Tech in this one. I'm taking the Miami Hurricanes money line. Two bad teams. This is not a like a sexy matchup at all. But I think there's some value here. Georgia Tech is really bad. I I distinctly remember watching the game that I bet on them to cover against Clemson at the start of the year. And I'm like, wow, they have one player and that hasn't yeah. changed. They still have one player. Miami it's quarterback, is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's the only bad thing, but Miami is still is horribly underperforming this year versus expectations. Mario Cristobal just coming in and not doing anything, but weird, weird, weird. <laughs> no one could have seen that coming. Weird. He's um, never done that before. <laughs> but you, you're able to get my like the spreads like one and a half to two, depending on what sports book you're looking at. Like, why would you take that when you can get like a plus one oh four up to? I think I saw a plus one oh eight on Miami just to win the game. It, Miami should be the more talented roster in theory. So, like, I'm just taking Miami money line on that one. I um. I think there's good value in it. Um, I don't think anybody's going to be moving, like moving, moving your direction too, Ben. Like it looks like that number is like now it's like even money on on like at least if you're looking at uh, DraftKings, even money now only plus one. And honestly, I'll just this is just a, an excuse to give you kudos. This is one I knew for sure, for sure that I was riding with you on Georgia last weekend. That movement started moving heavy in your direction real quick, and <laughs> Georgia held on strong, and it wasn't surprising to me. I was already kind of with you, but the money all went, and so if that's any tell again, crazy you might have found stat, yourself another winner. Crazy stat. 72% of all bets were on Tennessee last week. Um, Heartbreak. So that, but that's, that, that's the classic trap line that Vegas will throw out there. Um I didn't. I was looking for one this week. I didn't really feel like I saw one that like jumped off the page like that. But yeah, that's a uh, that. Not much else in the Miami game. I just there's value in a money line dog um, that should be more talented on a roster level. Um, the uh, I know I take Penn State all the time, but I I also I do like this matchup and I like the line. So the line opened at ten and a half. You're seeing some sports books have it at eleven. Some have it back down to ten. Some have it at eleven and a half. Maryland got crushed by Wisconsin's run game last week, and Penn State has very very good running right now. Granted, their offensive line is a bit banged up, but I teased it down to ten from like the the main line ten and a half, and I just I I feel pretty comfortable like if. Wisconsin, who, by the way, you want to know how many passes Graham Mertz completed last week? It was five. Five passes. And they beat the crap out of Maryland. Penn State just has to run the ball this week. They should be able to do the exact same thing. They got better athletes. So I'm on Penn State minus 10 on that one. Ten and a half, eleven. Hey, Ben. Yeah. Real quick, I saw a NFL mock draft because I'm a a sicko and I look at those already. I saw Penn State. Yeah, is that their left yeah. tackle? Yeah, he uh, he was hurt last week. He um, he actually got hurt in the Ohio State game, but um, I don't think he's allowed a, a sack this year. He's done really well. First year starting, he's unbelievable. Yeah, I saw he was like in the top five. Yeah, dude, people like, love him. He's, where was this guy? Yeah, dude's crazy. I would not have expected that, but honestly, Penn State's offensive line's been so bad for years that it's like I'm never thinking, oh yeah, like we got a good offensive lineman. Well, they have him, but I think he's going to be out this game. Um, okay, but no, he is very, very talented. Um, probably first rounder legitimately. Um, but yeah, Penn state minus 10, Penn state minus 11. You could probably be comfortable with this anywhere South of, you know, 14. I think they're probably going to cover. Okay. 
I like um, that. Kind of similar vein. This is actually two teams coming off. Of, I went a little bit heavier on. I guess I didn't. Never mind. Um, but Purdue and Illinois both lost last week. Both were kind of just like it was not a good game for either of them. But I like Illinois to to win by a touchdown against Purdue at home. Um, Brett mm-hmm. Bielma just gets Big Ten football, and Purdue really got demolished by a rushing attack, and that's all Illinois does. So Illinois by a touchdown um, based off of just kind of the offensive scheme versus defensive weakness. Illinois by a touchdown I like quite a bit. Okay. Um, what, do you think, what do you think happened last week against Michigan State with Illinois? I mean, <clears throat> it's funny because, like, I – I still don't think Michigan state is good. I think college kids are not professional athletes. They are prone to just mental lapses. And I think Illinois probably went in there and they're just like, we can win this one. This is straightforward. And it's like, Nope, you're, you you can't sleep on any conference games at all. But I I don't think Illinois is bad because of a a bad loss to a, a really horrible Michigan state team. It's just, I don't know. It's they're still a good team. They just it's college. Isn't kids, this you know? isn't this also where you just need to check yourself though too? Because you you look at the the seventeen seventeen game NFL schedule, and then you kind of forget. So it's like not even the college kids thing, right? It's just like as simple as like look, it's a ten eleven game schedule. There's weird matchups within conference that just happen, and yep. you lose games. And like Illinois is going to be a good team, and they might go eight and four. And then you you know you're like oh yeah yeah whatever like all right so they're not national championship level but they're gonna lose some games but they're also gonna win some you know so it's just like it's it's you have to keep recalibrating your brain for the college football schedule and not compare it to laughing at Marcus Mariota for example yes. or whatever you know like you you have to just kind of like calibrate it a little differently and I think you're right and that that's why I really like Illinois to bounce back like there's like I still trust Brett Bielema and and like what you're saying. The run game against Purdue, like I trust that more often than not. And like, yeah, of course it's going to burn you at some point. But you know, these interdivision games or you know, interconference rivals, like that stuff happens. Dude, I mean, Iowa, the worst offense in the Big Ten, just ran all over Purdue. Yep, all over Purdue, and it's like that's the worst. Like that's the worst damn offense in the Big Ten. So yeah, maybe in the yeah, country. Like, like this is a, a better matchup. I think for Illinois, then I don't know, man. I just Illinois. One of these teams is going to bounce back, and I think it's going to be Illinois. I'm I'm fully letting my Purdue Big Ten West champion um, fly out the window now with that loss mm-hmm. last week. I, I hate watching Iowa win, but whatever. Um, if Purdue just scored that overhits, anyway. Um, all right, I'll get out of the Big Ten because the Big Ten <laughs> is not enjoyable for most people. Um, we have, um, we have my depraved pick of the week, South Alabama, um, minus 16 and a half. They are playing at home against Texas state. I don't know anything about these teams. I'm just taking whichever team in my, if Texas state covers Texas state will be my depraved pick of next week. I think (laughs) I was talking about this with Dugan. I think I'm in the fun belt now. I was in, I was in like the AAC and conference USA for a bit. Um, I'm in, I'm in the Sun Belt. So South Alabama Panthers, what are they? Cougars? Jaguars? I know they're, they're, Texas they're State, is that, is that where, was Scott Bakula the quarterback for Texas State or am I, yeah, I got, <laughs> is that the no, right guy? I, I don't know. The prey pick of the week. <laughs> we'll move on. I don't even know what, what their mascot is. That's how far down the it rabbit hole. It is the Jaguars. Let's go, baby. I'm, I'm still a degenerate. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, we got Georgia minus 16 and a half at Mississippi State. This this line is probably going to swing towards like 17 and a half by the time it kicks. So just don't be afraid to tease that down below 17. Um, Georgia just beat I mean, what they they beat Tennessee by like 11. They can beat Mississippi mm-hmm. State by 16 and a half, um, even if it is on the road. Um, Especially nothing. if the players on Mississippi State don't have chairs to sit on. Exactly, dude. <laughs> Some of those. Did you guys spread, see that? 
Yeah, that was great. The wide receivers chairs just all no done. Yeah. They're done. all too Fold busy. That. Chuck, Chuck. <laughs> They're all too busy eating fish sandwiches and drinking lemonade with their fat girlfriends, according to Mike Leach. So Mike also Leach. is this a good is this a good time to talk about the Hilltoppers uniforms or no? Sure. You guys, you guys see that? I mean, the Hilltoppers uniform, do you see that they're going to put, uh, I don't even remember the name of the hill. Like the guy's name is like Big Red, right? He's just a hill. Yeah. And they're putting that on the helmet. But are they really going to put the visor with the guy's crazy eyes from the mascot on the visor? Because if they do that, they have really surpassed Oregon in my mind. And they are now the <laughs> uniform school in the country. Like they're, that is... They are now better it. than SMU. <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm sending my kid there now. Screw Oregon and the Nike money. He's a hilltopper. Put the googly eyes on the visor. Let's go. <laughs> you just you're a simpleton for jerseys, and I love it. Um, <laughs> it's my anyway. it's it's. I think I like jerseys because it's like the expression of men's fashion. Like women have like whatever fashion is, which I'm not interested in, but men have. Uniforms. uniforms. Yeah, uniforms. <laughs> like, let's all dress alike together like idiots. Wouldn't that be fun? A hundred percent. The uh, <laughs> the the other kind of, in theory, big name matchup that I got is uh, Oklahoma at West Virginia. Um, I've been pretty anti-West Virginia the whole year. Oklahoma, when Dylan Gabriel went down, they were pretty bad for a bit, but they're starting to look good again, you know, now that they've already blown their chance to win the Big 12. I'm just taking Oklahoma minus eight. I don't think that's a, a crazy pick. I could see West Virginia doing something stupid. I could see Oklahoma blowing this because Oklahoma hasn't been that good, but they've been a little bit better. I'm just – that's one of those throw-ins that I'm like, eh, why not? Give me something on a game that I'll, I'll watch just because it's big-name schools. Um, and then I got – Two more. I apologize before I get to my teaser parlay. This is just a very low over. This is probably the lowest over outside of the Iowa Wisconsin over, which I think is at thirty four points and scares the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> so I, I I wanted to take one that seemed really low. So I I did the pit at Virginia over forty and a half. That is that, that's like a Big Ten over under. That shouldn't be an ACC over under. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Give me, give me Pitt over 40 and a half. And then I had to kind of do the opposite. I had to look at a really high over under and take the under on it. And the last time I tried this, this burned me. But the U of A game against UCLA, another 11 touchdown game. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to take the under. <laughs> it's so dangerous. It's, it's yeah, crazy. Don't, don't do it, Ben. That's we tried talking you out. Of, we tried talking you in and out of this one because I'm with you. Like it makes no sense. Like there's no way there should be that many points. Just like there should, you know, the Iowa unders that hit hit and the Arizona overs that are over. I I don't know. This is what I'll <laughs> say about Arizona football. They're not good. Okay, their offense is terrific. So that's why that's there. Their defense is horrific. It's the like one of the worst defenses in the country, and this season. On games that they get blown out, so they got blown out by Utah. The following week, they're competitive as hell, and uh, Jed Fish is is going back to the Rose Bowl, and he's undefeated there. So uh, six and zero, yes, believe it or not, he's six and zero there. Um, so what does that mean, though? Bet bet the under at your own risk is all I'm saying because he's going to have the boys humming. He's six and zero there, like as an assistant. He uh, no, so remember. <laughs> when I believe it was Jim Mora, right at the time, Henny. If we want to go back in the Pac-12 time machine, the old um, junior, the old UConn head coach. Yeah, the old U. He's got those boys humming. Let me tell you, um, they're, they're, they're cover That's machines this fans. year. Actually, they are they cover are, machines. Yeah, <laughs> hey, uh, so he runs that cover two scheme, baby. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Jed Fish was his uh, associate head coach, and uh, they that beat Texas count. A&M. They they bet they beat Texas A&M. With uh, Josh Rosen, uh, the incredible Josh Rosen in the Rose Bowl, Jim Moore gets fired that season, and, and Jed Fish takes over and and went undefeated at home. So, uh, was it with better athletes? Who's to say? I don't know, but uh, he's undefeated there, so it's dangerous. Well, my Good my fact. hope here is that UCLA's defense is better than USC's defense. And I think that's probably an easy thing for most people to say is true. 
of yeah, any school. Yeah. It's yeah, and most schools' so. defenses are better than USC's. And last time it was almost an identical line. It was like seventy seventy seven point five. This is seventy seven point five. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, eleven touchdowns. You guys can have your fun, and I'll just sit there and sweat it out and hope that somebody tackles somebody in this game. I'm fully expecting U of A to lose, but I'm also fully expecting uh, Jaden Delora to do just crazy ass things um, like three times in a row and then throw like four picks in a row. So as long as they're not um, pick sixes, I feel good about it. Um, no promises. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to catch one of these 11 touchdown unders. I promise you guys that. Um, I believe do you get, just play the odds. Like you're due on one of these. I, yeah. I agree. Um, the, there's two big games. Um, I guess really only one big game. And then the other one's just a good matchup. Um, you have TCU versus Texas. The line's at seven. Texas is favorited, um, which I think a lot of people will look at that and be like, are you kidding me? Let me take TCU. Um, but in my teaser parlay, I basically, I juice TCU to t- plus 10 and a half. Um, to give me a, you know, the opportunity for them to still lose big, but cover. Um, Cause I mean, you can tease these things however you want, but um, 10 and a half. Let's hope um, maybe they win. Maybe they don't, but 10 and a half versus Texas. You could get bad Texas. You could get really good Texas. Um, but I'm going to take the teaser TCU plus 10 and a half. I'm parlaying this with, this is a big trap game for LSU. Huge emotional win against Alabama, and then they're going to Arkansas, and it's like, oh, they should have easily win, right? Um, The line's at like three and a half, which is always a killer to me. I hate those three and a half, so I just bump that down to two and a half. Um, And then this is not a, a... this is not the world's most sexy parlay. Don't get me wrong. It's like only a plus 200. Um, I threw in the Michigan Nebraska game. I teased that bad boy all the way down from 30 to minus 23 and a half. So I am, uh, this should hit, right? Like there's no way if you tease all these lines that anything goes wrong. Um, but that is my, uh, that's my college football slate boys. Another hundred percent week coming up. I I think that's the rule in gambling. If, Correct me if I'm wrong, right? If you tease lines, they automatically win. Yeah, well, yeah for sure. 100%. <laughs> I think I, that's how it goes. I love the creativity in that bet, you know, and, and the willingness to, to share. Myself. I'm trying to protect myself. I love myself. it. I like I, it. I, my heart. I like it because the TCU one's fun because there's college football playoff implications with that game. So that's a fun one. Then I Do like you, the second. So go ahead. I was just going to say, do you want to talk about that at all? Just like the top, kind of like the, just a small shakeup. We don't have to like go one by one, but yeah, do you, do like you feel good about where it's at. You like TC where they're at now. You can see this, like it changes week to week, like so quickly. Like we kind of, I think we all kind of, I don't know. I, I felt like we all knew in the room that Georgia was going to win. Uh, yeah. you know, maybe we we're hoping for Tennessee, but like sure. you kind of knew what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Not surprising there. Maybe the Bama one's a little surprising, but um, I think I very aloofly, tease the idea of like, Hey, this is interesting. You know, Brian Kelly finally gets a chance with some athletes. Like, so a lot of like kind of what you think might happen is kind of happening. So like, what do we have written in the stones here? Like it's getting uh Notre Dame ends up sneaking up on Clemson. It, I don't know. It just got interesting and we shook it up again. And uh, I guess just kind of like where is your head at as to has anything changed? Or do we still kind of think we're going to see what we're going to see, I guess, or do you have any feelings on it at all? Man, we'll Clemson get this. blew it. It <laughs> really yeah, blew it. Clemson definitely did blow it, but get this, boys. Tennessee might be the smartest team in, in America. They lost that game to Georgia, and now they probably won't play in the SEC championship where they could accrue another loss and get kicked out of the playoff. They could go undefeated from here on out, not play in the play in the in the SEC championship and sneak into the playoff. So well, keep- the problem is that LSU in theory could challenge Tennessee as an SEC champion in theory, right? Like, this is where this stuff gets crazy. Like, you could have a two-loss LSU win the SEC, and then it's just chaos. Because Tennessee, obviously, I think would, would make sense in the top four. Sorry, my dog is has the zoomies, um, if you can hear that. But, <laughs> no, um, not at all. 
No, <laughs> large, you. A large pit bull just running into things. Um, but no, dude, I, it, there's a lot of chaos scenarios still out there. Um, it's kind of crazy, man. I'm, I'm intro. I TCU wins out. They're good. And then yep. it's just, you know, what do you, Oregon's one horrible loss is probably going to kill them. You know, like, how do you, how do you put a one loss Oregon that got demolished by Georgia in the top four? If you have a, you know, one loss Tennessee, you know, it's, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. And I think the one thing that Tennessee does have going for it is they absolutely, you know, shit pumped, um, LSU in in Baton Rouge, right? Like head to head. So so a long that, time ago, though. You know, it's all about when you play these games. True, true. But which is why it's tough. But, but then, yeah. But then, how do you hold it against Oregon? That's why. I mean, it's we're in it chaos just, season. It's yes. yeah, and it'll change every week, like you guys said. Transitive just, properties apply now. People get weird, and this is where fan bases just get really weird. So yes. just start quote tweeting everybody and laugh. Honestly, don't. If it's not your team, just just laugh at the chaos. So if we're looking at it realistically, right, Georgia's number one, and they're going to be number one the entire year probably. They look absolutely incredible. Number two is probably going to be Ohio State because they look awesome. Um, three, are we going Michigan? Are we? Are we? Well, no, because doesn't who does Michigan play head to head? They have to Michigan still play Ohio a, State, or, right? They, they, that's all they really have. They have a horrible non-con schedule. That True. That could be Michigan's downfall here. Um, you know, they played like the three worst teams in college football for their non-con games when, you you know, I'm not saying everybody else is like playing crazy games, but you got Ohio State playing Notre Dame. All of a sudden that Notre Dame win looks a little bit better, even though like that was this Notre Dame team is down still from like where people thought they were. Like say say Michigan beats Ohio State, but then people start looking at what they who they played all year and it's like, they're going to have, what, two ranked wins, Ohio State and Penn State? And it's like how then – like the measuring sticks just get moved constantly. It's crazy. Yeah, we don't know if Penn State will be uh, ranked by the end of the year, right? No, shut up. They're going to be 10 and 2. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it is definitely chaos season. Do I think TCU wins out? I don't think so because they still, like we said, they have to play Texas this week, which they're not even favored in. Um, I would love to see TCU ride it out because that would just mean I'm vindicated in my my questioning to our friend Josh Neighbors of, hey, are you a believer in TCU? And he wasn't. And I, I tried to convince him to be. And uh, I'm looking really good right now. So that would be a win for your boy. But I don't think it happens because they still have to play um, Texas. And I think they have to play Oklahoma as well, don't they? Uh I feel like I said something about – I feel like there was like maybe a couple – did they already play? I think they played when Dylan Gabriel was out. Okay. I think I so know too. Because I, I think, think – like, isn't it Oklahoma I, State? I Is remember it? saying something about Oklahoma doesn't lose to purple teams twice in a row. Yes. So that would be – They have Texas Ray. and Baylor. Texas and there, Baylor. There you go. There you go. Okay. I was like – Which – which, Which both you know, of them are on the road, so that yeah. that does mean something. That's tough. But no, now, no one's a believer in the in the in the Big Twelve. I don't think that's the problem. So like they can't yeah. like they literally have to be undefeated. There's no other option for them. The Pac-12 right. is getting more respect than than the Big Twelve is currently. Yes, um, which is why I assume San Diego State saves a conference and everything's fine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All the revenue that comes from San Diego. Nothing so. to see here. Nothing to see here. <laughs> we have fish tacos. It's fine. <laughs> oh, dude, Henny, can you imagine though, really quick, if we have a reason to go to San Diego for football, and then we can just go to the Pacific, uh, what is it, Pacific Beach Fish Shop or whatever? Yeah, yeah, you got to hit the fish shop. But I mean, is it even safe to go to a game at San Diego State? I mean, I saw that horror show of no shade when it hit eighty degrees one time, and everybody almost died because it didn't have water. So, is it safe? Is the question, dude? They're no, literally I- doing half off tickets right now because they can't get people to go to the games. <laughs> Dude, they had one one traumatic experience on Twitter and they'll never recover. It's 75 degrees there all the time, guys. It's fine. (laughs) Bring water to the game. Wear a hat and you'll be okay. I I swear to you. People attend football games in Arizona. You can survive. Yeah. No, but I mean, looking back at it, right? Like, it's true. Like, dude, this is an absolutely insane finish to uh, what's been a great college football season, right? I mean, 
Alabama's definitely out of it um, with two losses. Uh, ben, you make a solid point with LSU. Michigan could still shit the bed, which we've seen in the past. Um, I, I for one, I hope Tennessee gets into the playoff because I just think their offense is incredible, and I think they could make some noise. But, man, we are in for a wild-ass ride here towards the end of the season. So I, I love it, man. I'm just waiting on Fandle to pay me on my futures that I've already cashed, but whatever. Are you still waiting for that Arizona win? Yeah. Yeah, still Jeez. waiting. I guess they just don't like pay those out until weeks. the end of the season. Yeah, like is there like six. is there like a protest in that we're unaware of? Like, yeah, like I'm a, wherever they're headquartered, I'll be the only guy outside with a sandwich board, just being like, <laughs> just, "We demand pay." Yeah. Uh, I love it. Well, hey, let's. Uh, I promised both of you a quick minute. Um, Honey, you want to do your your quick NBA minute? Um, you know, I just want to point out that, you know, Ben Matherin continues to sail uh, 30 points the other night, zero assists. That's the kind of basketball we love. Uh, if you're going to put our boy on the bench when he's clearly a star, um, <laughs> I expect him to come out and uh, chuck. Do nothing but chuck, my man. Just keep shooting, King. Um, so shout out to Ben Matherin. Um, I think outside of that, you're just kind of looking at the high usage rates that I think are really interesting. And, you know, I, I can't do it in a minute, but I'll just simply say that Giannis always is touching the ball, which makes sense. He gets to the free throw line a ton. And I think that offense will change as the season goes on and they get Chris Middleton really work back into it. And then you kind of have, uh, you know, you have your boy Luca on the other side, whose usage rate is up there with the bad Kobe years, the Russell Westbrook MVP, uh, like Jordan 86, 87. And so I'm just curious as to how that plays out. I know there's a lot of Luca lovers out there, but I will just say that generally when, uh, People are all forced to stand in the corner and watch you play basketball. It doesn't generally end well in the playoffs. Yeah, I saw a thing recently that JaVale McGee is already being labeled as the worst free agent signing of this past offseason. And I saw somebody comment that it was a true inside job by JaVale McGee that he's getting full revenge for Game 7 by just hijacking the Mavericks season. And I'm I'm absolutely here for it. Love that. I absolutely, yeah, I absolutely love that. And uh, I could honestly talk about the NBA for hours, but you know, you're giving me a minute. So that's what I chose. Let's talk really quickly though. I know I gave you a minute, but I do, I would be um, mad at myself if I didn't mention the Warriors are four and seven and they look like complete ass. Any comment, any? Um, their city jerseys are particularly terrible. So if you've seen that, <laughs> then they are headed right to the tank. Uh, the city jerseys came out and, um, not a lot of great efforts across the board on the city jerseys, but the Warriors, is, is it like a rose at the bottom? It, it is, isn't, yes. But Portland's like the Rose City, right? So yeah, I don't get it either. I don't understand. I mean, I guess shout out to Dame. Uh, congrats yeah. on congratulating Dame on the passing of the torch. I'm not sure yeah. what that means at all. Uh, terrible. Sun's jersey looks nice, though. I'll say yeah. that, that city jersey, it's kind of grown on me a little bit. Not perfect, but I could always complain about jerseys because – has been pointed out that is my fashion. Yeah. That that's your thing, dude. Shout out to all the Native American tribes in Arizona. That's a really cool shout out by the Sun. So and then the Lakers are two and nine and now LeBron is out for the next two games as well with a groin injury. Uh are we thinking that they will have to blow it up mid season? I don't know. Yeah. I, I is he just waiting for Bronny? I don't really understand this team. I mean it's not a good team. They're, it's like one of those teams that where all the stats indicate that they're one of the late, I mean, with the Sixers, by the way, of course, and with probably just, I'm just going to lump Ben Simmons into that group too. He's still a Sixer by proxy. Um, <laughs> the Lakers are just one of those teams where it's like loose balls, 30th, like rebounds, 30th, like who gives a sh- 30th? Like they're just, they don't care. So like this yeah. is a stupid team. Don't watch the Lakers. Please spare yourself. If you're a Lakers fan or pretend to be on TV, um, just don't even do it. Yeah, that Ben uh, Ben Simmons stank is still in Philly. So, like you said, by proxy, he's associated. I like it. So that has been your NBA minute, folks. Uh, again, we're in mid season or beginning of season, so we're just going to hit on the uh, the low hanging fruit there. Ben, hit me with the NHL minute, my man. I know little, you got some little, stuff on Mister Ice. A little talking puck here. Mister um, Ice is <laughs> on a on a hot streak, five in a row. He's back. He had his uh, like Jordan flu game last night. He was like deathly ill. I know RSV is ripping through like the whole country right now. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, um, five in a row. He does this every single year. Just get on board. I literally, um, I'm, 
I'm up 300% of the deposit I put in just betting only Mr. Ice's picks um, in the last week. So get on board at Elio82. Um, some some other key talking points, just uh, Sabres, Devils, and Canadians overs are hitting like wild cakes right now. Um, hot cakes, wild, wild cakes. cakes. I, so I was giving <laughs> my next thought, sorry. The wild are regulation money line winners <laughs> every time. I've been throwing them in. I, I suddenly want a mush. little Debbie. Like, Do I have permission when, when we go wild cakes that I can just come in full Wayne's World? Just car. Yeah, 100%. Okay, game on, game on. And then you can jump back into your Minnesota wild take from now on. I'm just, I'll just yeah, win in sure. doubt. Car. When, when we get big enough, I'm definitely making a shirt that says jump shots from the goal line. And it's going to be like a little Debbie like cake, but it says wild cakes on it. And we're going to sell those like wild cakes. Well, that's my intellectual property. So I get the majority of that. Um, no, that's 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 what happens when I'm like, I'm, I try to keep it to a minute. Unlike John, who will just ramble about the NBA for like eight minutes. Um, I was supported. Hey, I was, hey, like that was, that was. Dugan, didn't, he, 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 you know, he pushed that forward. It wasn't my fault. He encouraged it. Yeah, yeah. throw me under the bus. Go ahead. <laughs> um, Sorry, we stifled your creativity, Ben. Run wild, good. buddy. Run There's wild like cakes. One, one significant <laughs> injury from uh, from the, the games this week. Uh, Zach Wierenski for the Blue Jackets is out for a extended period of time. So a bad team is going to get worse. Um, any team that's playing them probably take them regulation. Um, money line just to kind of juice those odds a little bit for you that's all i got perfect that has been your nhl minute would you say ben talking puck puck talk something like that bro yeah i love it well there you go folks that that's where we're gonna leave the nhl uh let's jump back on the gridiron with the the nfl um obviously some fun storylines going on right now the green bay packers lost to the detroit lions is Aaron Rodgers washed up, boys? Is he uh, is he still on an ayahuasca trip, and this is just a bad trip, or what's going on? I think he just he stopped caring all that ayahuasca. He just stopped caring. Well, the only thing he cares about is making everybody else take the blame for how bad the team is. That's the only thing that he cares about. He looks That's something absolutely. I think he's been into for a while. By the way, <laughs> true, That's true. He looks but absolutely he was good miserable. Enough. He was good enough before that, though. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, hundred percent. I, I don't know, man. That's like the, I will say though, like the, God, yeah, I mean, they've complained about this every year, and it's been a like forever storyline. But there's not a lot of weapons there. I mean, I know they have like a running back, and they should have a decent running game because they have a couple backs that seem somewhat qualified, but. You know, Lazard as your as your go to guy, and hey, he's been fine on my fantasy team. But that's not really the ticket in the NFL these days. If you have a a quarterback that you still believe in, so it's a it's a weird team, and it's definitely not it's not. Yeah, you can't lose to the Lions, man. I mean, although Sunday ticket, hello, <laughs> Mister Geek is gonna fire that thing back up. <laughs> Shout out to the father in law. I like it. Um, yeah, I think they've lost like four or five in a row, so they're not looking too hot. Um, the other storyline in the NFL, obviously, the in-season um, showing of the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, what is that uh, freaking series called, John? Again, I'm, I'm hard, hard knocks. Brain hard. Oh, no, it's hard, hard, hard knocks, knocks but in the in-season hard knocks. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Sorry, my my brain was on wild cake still. So, um, yeah, and they they showed a little clip. I sent it to you guys on Twitter. Um, of DeAndre Hopkins absolutely uh, shit-talking Kyler Murray, saying, number one, what are you seeing out there? What are you seeing? And them just going at it. Um, this is like the fifth instance just this season of Kyler Murray not getting along with people on the sidelines. Um, I think we can officially call this a storyline, right? Like he, he, uh, he does not have the team responding to him. Cliff, I, I've written about him. I've talked about him. I still think he's a uh, inadequate coach. He was an inadequate coach in college. It's showing up in the NFL. They are absolutely terrible. Um, I am. I'm very excited to see how all this plays out um, going forward. I want to see just the self destruction of the Arizona Cardinals because I'm located in Arizona. Know a lot of Cardinal fans who thought that they were going to be absolute Super Bowl contenders this year, and they are terrible. 
Um, are you are you boys going to be watching that at all? I always I always think I'm going to, but one thing I've I've found consistently is just that like I get so into hard knocks for like people getting cut, and like the in season ones are just kind of like ugh, gosh, it's like a grind to get through. But there seems like there's going to be more drama here than last year when they did the Colts. Like, I mean, you got a new Call of Duty dropping, so like I'm sure they're going to be trying to catch. Tyler Gaiman instead of like watching film like you got all the other stuff going on like I would love to see King like Cliff Kingsbury get fired during the show that'd be like the mm-hmm. next best thing like if it seems what, like they what, start are, the, getting what are the point, odds that what are the odds that Kyler buys a PlayStation off of you <laughs> well based off of the contract I imagine he probably has like seven <laughs> already um, maybe he's hoarding them too what you a know, twist that would be Ben Sills, Kyler, yeah. local, local Tucson man, <laughs> blamed for the, the the downfall of the Cardinals this year. Actually. Then I'll tune in, but I think like right, the Hard Knocks in season, like you're competing with actual football. Like that's when I'm not in. Like when there's no football, yes, of course I want football. But once there's actual football, just give me the outtakes on Twitter. Like Dugan, you sent it to me today. Best thing, that's all I needed. You know, I don't need to watch that whole show. Just just send me the chaos. I'll find out. And then we can pick at it. Yeah. Do you want to know no, something I, depressing? I I actually watched the in season hard knocks during preseason from like last year. Like I, I went back and just started rewatching it, and it was like it was just so weird. I was like that craving football that badly that I was just like, yeah, let me watch like last year's hard knocks. Um, it was oh my bad. god, that. That makes sense, though. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, when there's no football, it makes sense. But when there is football, I'm like, no, I just want to watch. Like, you already put on Panthers and Falcons tonight. Like, I had to peel my eyes open to watch parts of that. So, for me to, like, be like, oh, I'm really invested in this team that sucks. Like, no, just give me the clips, man. Just yeah. just, just, give me Hopkins ripping at Kyler Murray on the sideline. Yeah, I'm definitely here for it. And then the other storyline, um, Frank Reich was fired from the Colts, speaking of the Colts. Way to do a great segue there, Ben. And uh, they replaced him with Jeff Saturday, who, former Colt great, uh, was on the Super Bowl winning um, Colts team back in the day with Peyton Manning, was there for a long time. I believe it, he might be a Hall of Famer already, or he's going to be. Um, was literally in the booth like the week before for ESPN um, talking about his fantasy team. And uh, his only coaching experience was he coached high school ball in Georgia. Um, and he went like four and like four and eight or four and nine, or I don't even know whatever it was, but just a complete surprise pick. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on how this is going to go? Are you, are you interested in watching this upcoming Colts game just to see the, the madness that ensues? I would bet on the Colts. I, for, they, I, I don't, they're playing the Raiders. Yeah. Well, I didn't even know that. I mean, that makes it a, a lock, right? Like, dude, I don't know. Like, <laughs> This seems like it's just going to be a catastrophic failure. Um, and I'm not sure what the hell they were thinking. Like, But it it's cool for Jeff Saturday, but I feel like everybody else is going to be like, what the hell just happened? Like, I've been I, – I worked my way up from being, like, you know, the coaching assistant and then the offensive analyst. And then I'm – you know, now I'm the tight ends coach. And, like, now I'm the running backs coach. And it's like, oh, just kidding. Here's a dude who – hasn't played or coached in a long time. You're the head coach of our of our NFL franchise. Like Jim Irsay is on drugs again. That's all I can. That's that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> again, I love it, dude. He, that that dude is a a trip for like. And that's saying it lightly. He is a interesting person. Henny, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously interesting. Like, I, I don't know. Every time one of these things happen, I, it's just, you know, it gets to this point where you're like, oh, it's like, is this fair? And blah, blah, blah. Like, I have no idea. But like, this is what these guys do. Like, I, I, I don't know how to like, what am I supposed to do to police these guys? Like, it sucks as a fan. You're just like, yeah, is it fair that Jeff Saturday got the job? I don't know. And then like, there's this whole thing with Ryan Clark and he's like fighting with everybody on the internet and he's wrong, but like, it's right and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It's just like a weird thing. And I don't know. Colts are going to be fun. like, they suck anyways. Who cares? Like, this is all going to be, it's like when everybody got up in arms about Steve Nash, I feel like. And then ultimately this is probably just going to like, either he'll be a good coach or he won't be, and he'll be fired and he'll be out of there. And then someone else will get an opportunity. It's always a bummer when 
there seems like there's people that are more qualified that don't get the job. So there's like this whole other, I don't know. There's just like a ton of different stuff that goes into these uh, decisions. And I just don't know. It's just yeah. like, it's, it's a tiring thing that I just wish wouldn't happen. I'm like, just give the job to Reggie Wayne. So we just don't have to have these discussions because mm-hmm. like, this is a Colts team that's going nowhere. That's pretty much where I'm at. Like they, maybe they win this week. Maybe they're good. Maybe Jeff's at, maybe he's a good coach. Who knows? Didn't they maybe just the way to get paid the in the building. coordinator too? Yeah. I think that yes, yeah, so did. you're gonna stick Jeff Saturday in there with no no OC. Yeah, and like no OC might be better than what they've been trotting out there. But geez, man, dude, I don't know. It's just this is gonna be. I think this is gonna be a, a train wreck. But maybe yeah, at least they week. can. Re- yeah, they can rely on Sam Ellinger though, who has all that NFL experience. So that's fine. <laughs> hey, I we're forgot. Not, we're not gonna slander I, Sam Ellinger on this podcast. Don't bet, <laughs> maybe don't bet on the Colts, dude. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, though. It's like it's so weird that like I'm with you, Ben. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe bet on them. Maybe don't. I like I have no idea. These things are so weird, and that's what I'm saying. Like it just gets so. Uh, these are like the kinds of things like I don't want to talk about in sports. Where I'm like, I don't, dude. I don't know if he should have the job or not have the job. Like I'm not in the interview process. There's probably someone more qualified. There's definitely an argument to be made there. But then, you know, then you end up talking about it. I'm like, I, but I never even cared about Jeff. I didn't even. I mean, who cares about Jeff? He's a center in the NFL. Should he have the job? Probably not. Stupid, yeah. but whatever. Here we are. It's true. Give Pat McAfee yep. the job. Oh, that would have been fun. Dad I would, be, I would yeah. have watched Electric. every Colts game. Yeah, just, just give me a coach and a tank top. Screw it. That's what I'm yep. saying. Yeah, why not? Why not? But, but he has be... to. He, he has to wear the tank top. Like that's those are the rules. So and they trade for Aaron Rodgers, so he can come on his show every week. Oh my god, trade deadline's already passed, but that would have been great. I like where your head's at. All right, boys. Well, Brian. that is. That is our week in sports. Um, we have some great picks by Ben, some great storylines to follow. I hope everybody watches the Colts game this week. I know I will be watching that one. I'll be watching that TCU-Texas game, and I'll definitely be watching the Arizona-UCLA game just to see if Ben will be crying in his yinglings if he had them. I wish um, I had I should, I should have brought you some. That's I, Did you? No, you flew. Never mind. I was going to say, I was like, if you drove across country and didn't bring me a case of ginglings, I'm never coming on here again. But I would, I would have brought like seven cases just so okay. Henny can try it as well. Henny, have you ever oh, had no. gingling? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Gingling. It's like once you once you cross the Mississippi, you have to do it. It's a rule. Yeah, it is definitely a rule, and that's all you drink when you're over there. So perfect, boys. Well, I think uh, we've given our listeners enough to chew on for the next few days until um, you know football starts up. Um, with that audience, please remember to like, subscribe, and share this podcast. Leave us a comment. Leave us a rating. It helps us out tremendously, especially on Apple. So please, please do us that favor. Um, and with that, also follow us on social media. Twitter is an absolute mess right now. We're not verified, and we are not paying $8 a month to get verified. We can promise you that. Um, but nonetheless, follow us on there at Jump Shots Pod. Um, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, follow us on TikTok. We're on everything. We would love to interact with you further. With that, we bid you adieu and we hope you have a great rest of your week. We'll talk to you later. Bye.